In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. As we gather in this Holy Week to celebrate uh, the way of the cross, to walk the path of the cross with Jesus, we call to mind all those people we wish to pray for in this time of prayer. We especially call to mind those suffering from the virus at the moment. We also keep in mind those caring for them, sacrificing much to be uh, on hand in whatever way they need. We especially think of medical teams, of chaplains, of key workers of any kind, of families left at home, those for whom that's difficult. We pray as well for those who will die as a result of this virus, perhaps who will die physically alone, but we wish to accompany them now with our prayers. We walk this way of the cross with the Lord. The first station, Jesus is condemned by Pilate. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. If the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. We begin our journey on the way of the cross by seeing Jesus arrested, mastered, captive. Pilate, on the other hand, washes his hands, a symbol of being free once again of a burdensome decision, liberated from having sent an innocent man to his death, not held down by the taunts and threats of the crowd anymore. But is he really free? Is Jesus really captive? You and I can fool ourselves that what we're doing is right, even when we know it's wrong. We can make excuses which don't really convince us, but we go along with it. We reflect on the decisions we've made that bind us and which have rejected the freedom Jesus is offering us in our addictions, our relationships, our injustices. Jesus, my Lord, you took this captivity on for my sake. I want you to set me free from all that holds me back from you. May I never again feel free when I see my actions in chaining those around me. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. At the cross her station keeping, stood the mournful mother weeping. Close to Jesus to the last. The second station, Jesus receives the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A voice I did not know said to me, I freed your shoulder from the burden. Your hands were freed from the load. Jesus seems to be handling the cross with great tenderness in this image. One hand holds it close to his breast to be loved rather than despised. The other hand seems to be holding it as something precious. Jesus, after all, would recognise skilful woodwork. Perhaps as he sets out on his journey, he is thinking of how St. Joseph patiently passed on to him the art of designing, carving and shaping and sometimes having to start all over again. How the hearts and souls of those around him need to be carved and shaped to fall in love with the cross, not to hate this tool of salvation, but to learn to hold it close to themselves. Perhaps you and I fear something at the moment that is a sort of cross. We can see no quality of woodwork in it, but see it only as something hateful and ugly. What is Jesus inviting me to embrace? Jesus, my Lord, you carried this weapon of evil with such nobility. You desire even now that my heart be shaped by this way of the cross so as to live more fully for you. I desire that too, Lord. Help me to embrace my own path of discipleship.
I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. Through her heart his sorrow sharing, all his bitter anguish bearing. Now at length the sword has passed. The third station, Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. Jesus clatters to the ground under the weight of the cross. What horror goes through our heart as we see our beloved fall, and yet what hope it gives us that now he knows our falls so well. And look, his right hand still clings to the cross. It seems to say, your salvation means more to me than my own pain. Can you or I say that about the people in our lives, that we care most of all for their salvation, that they discover the joy of the gospel, the joy of life in Jesus Christ? Am I willing to embrace little hidden sacrifices for that intention, giving up a little comfort here or an extra treat there, knowing that when my small nothings are offered to Jesus, they too take on the great power of the cross? Jesus, my Lord, you love me more than I can know. Even when you seem to have gone away, your hand still holds me close, and I feel sorrowful I ever thought you could abandon me. Give me a love for those you have placed in my life, and a deep joy to pray that they come to know you as Lord. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. Oh, how sad and sore distressed Was that mother highly blessed Of the soul begotten one the fourth station, Jesus meets his blessed mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. How beautiful our mother Mary appears in this image a beauty that's hidden beneath the pain that she shares with Jesus in this moment, and yet which seems to radiate from her. A beauty that comes from her being without sin. A beauty that comes from her total faithfulness to God's will. A beauty that is willing to walk into the darkness with the Lord, trusting that it will lead to dazzling light. How often do we look for a more surface-level beauty in ourselves and in others, and when it disappears from view, we abandon it as having lost its appeal. A beauty based only in physical attraction, in a good reputation, in fame and in wealth. How can I begin to appreciate the much deeper beauty of those who are willing to suffer with others, the true meaning of compassion? How can I begin to thank God for the radiance of this kind of beauty? Jesus, my Lord, I so often settle for a beauty that passes. Help me to see the deep and lasting beauty that comes from your mercy, from making me clean of sin. Dear Mother Mary, may I learn from you the beauty of your heart. May your pure heart become mine. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. 
Christ above in torment hangs, she beneath beholds the pangs of her dying glorious Son. The fifth station, Simon helps Jesus to carry the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brethren, you did it to me. Jesus seems to be preoccupied by something in this image. We're not sure of what, but the soldier in green notices it too and seems to stare. Maybe Jesus is in some kind of pain. Maybe he is carefully taking the next step on this gruelling journey. Either way, he is made able to be preoccupied because of Simon's strength, who takes the burden of the cross while Jesus pays attention to a smaller detail. Is it not true that when someone acts as Simon in our life, taking the burden of something major, it enables us to do those things that are much smaller and require more of our close attention? Like when we're in hospital, we can focus on our loved ones around the bed because a Simon doctor or nurse sees to the things of our drip or the heart rate monitor. Or when we're at home, when someone else does some shopping for us, it allows us to spend more time on our prayer or on our phone calls. The Simons in our life teach us what it feels like to be loved if we allow them. But it also shows us what it means when we reach out to someone else and act as a Simon for them. Jesus, my Lord, I notice in this image that you allow yourself to be weak, to be helped and to be loved. May I let go of the pride that stops me letting myself be loved. And may I reach out in my turn to someone around me needing some love right now. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always and then do with me what you will. Is there one who would not weep, whelmed in miseries so deep, Christ's dear mother to behold? The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Truly I say to you, this poor widow has put in everything she had, her whole living. Veronica steps out of the crowd to offer Jesus some comfort. Jesus has accepted now the love of his mother, of Simon, and now of Veronica. We remember that Jesus is true God and true man. Jesus was there when the earth he walks on was created, when the tree he carries was given life, when Veronica herself was loved into being by the Father. And yet he accepts the tokens that you and I offer him when offered in love, not because he needs them, but because he loves to see love returned. He walks this road in love. Moreover, he is love himself walking this road. How he longs to see his creatures turn to him with these acts of mercy offered to him in this station. But more often offered to the Jesus we see sleeping on the streets or unable to pay the bills or fearful or anxious about an unexpected pregnancy or mourning the loss of a loved one. Here is Jesus, his face waiting to be wiped clean. And on that affectionate glance we give to another, he repays it more than we could imagine by leaving an imprint of himself, of turning our little acts of mercy into an image of his own loving face. Are my eyes open to see where Jesus wants me to offer him love today? Jesus, my Lord, you remain present to your people throughout the years. You remain present in your people especially those who are suffering. May we, like Veronica, reach out in merciful love 
and adore you when you make this act into an image of yourself. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. Can the human heart refrain from partaking in her pain? in that mother's pain untold. The seventh station, Jesus falls a second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. The hatred in this image comes across so strongly, the hatred of the man holding the whip, of the man holding Jesus by the rope around his waist, by the sins of you and me that have floored Jesus once again. This time, both his hands fall to the ground, a sign of how he has accepted the weakness of our human experience. Do I feel attracted to Jesus in this image or repelled? When I see weakness around me, do I feel attracted to it or repelled? What about when I see it in myself? Do I hate my weaknesses, the reality that I can't do everything I want? Or am I able to love them, to see an opportunity in them to fall on God and on his strength? St. Paul spoke of how our weakness is our greatest strength. But so often we feel the need to perform, to be perfect in the eyes of others, always to know the answer and never to learn. How much our pride needs to be that seed that falls to the ground and dies, to be raised up with humility and true life, trusting only in the power of grace living within us by means of our baptism. Jesus, my Lord, I am sorry for the times I have loved human strength and despised signs of weakness. I am sorry that this has left me unable to be real with you and with others, Help me to learn to love my weakness. Help me to see that I am weak. Help me to see the freedom that comes from allowing you to raise me up. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. Bruce derided, cursed, defiled, she beheld her tender child, all with bloody scourges rent. The eighth station, Jesus speaks to the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. I am the resurrection and the life. Do you believe this? Jesus, so weak in the images that have led up to this, appears here as teacher and master. We are reminded that he is choosing this way of the cross, that at any moment he could step away and save us in some other way. But here is a moment in which he draws on some deeper strength to console others rather than weep at his own pain. When I'm weighed down by some cross, whether big or small, do I become blinded from seeing the tears of others? Is it almost that I'm wearing blinkers so as not to notice anyone else's need but my own? Here Jesus reaches out to encourage the women who are so mournful at the tragedy of the cross, because he sees they need to have deeper faith, faith in the power of God to bring light out of the deepest darkness. Am I aware of the need to offer words of encouragement to those in great darkness? Am I aware that in my own darkness, I must maintain a deep sense of God's presence? Jesus, my Lord, teach me the art of seeing the need of others, even when I myself am in need. Expand and stretch my heart to see how the power of reaching out to someone else can lead us both to light and life. 
Give me faith and hope to believe that you bring the most spectacular light out of the bleakest dark. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. For the sins of his own nation Saw him hang in desolation Till his spirit forth he sent The ninth station, Jesus falls the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. And to Adam he said, Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. In this third and final fall, Jesus seems almost to kiss the ground he walks on. When St. John Marie Vianney, the patron saint of priests, arrived in his new home of Ars, his first action was to kiss the ground on the boundary of the parish. It was a parish that many saw as a way of getting rid of St. Jean-Marie to the middle of nowhere. He loved that ground and prayed for those people so much that in a matter of a few years, ours was the beating heart of faithful France, with many souls returning to God's grace in the sacrament of confession and many saints being born from that soil. This is surely what Jesus saw in the ground on which he fell, the ground which, soaked with the blood of Christ, would be the ground you and I would be born from. What promise this ground holds? What mercy of the Lord to fall to the ground so that we would be raised up? What promise the so soil of your life and mine holds right now for us to become saints here and now in the midst of our falls, acknowledging our sins, yet offering to the world another way the way of the cross that leads to the bliss of new life in Christ. Jesus, my Lord, help me to love the ground around me, the town I live in, the place I work, the family I live with. Help me to see that it is here and here alone that you are calling me to greatness, not the greatness of the world, but the greatness you long for for me, that I am created for, to know you and to live for you now and in the life to come. Thank you, Lord, for this great calling. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. O thou mother fount of love, touch my spirit from above, make my heart with thine accord. The tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Can it really have got to this point? Jesus, worshipped and adored by so many, now facing death as a criminal. We get so used to the reality of the cross in Jesus's life that maybe we forget how unjust a punishment it was. And also the why. Why was Jesus sent to the cross? Because he claimed to be God. Not because people didn't like his teaching or were afraid of him in some way. Because he claimed to be God. We profess that Jesus is God. That as he is stripped before us in this image, we see that God has truly taken on the nature of what it is to be human. We see that our spiritual life is not something we live in our heads or somewhere in the clouds, but that we must make present in our bodily life. We are body and spirit, and God became body and spirit. So my eating, my sleeping, my working, 
my loving, my teaching and my learning, my leisure, my heartbreak. All these noble human realities have now become places to meet God through Jesus Christ. I'm not to dress them up to pretend that spiritual life happens somewhere else, but to strip them back to see that the simplest human act, thought, decision and word are now a place of encounter with God. How do I feel to know in all walks of life I am to live as a son or a daughter of God? Are there some areas of my life that remain covered up and that need to be stripped back to bear the light of God's spirit? Jesus, my Lord, the pain must have been excruciating as the guards stripped off your clothes, which had stuck to your wounds. Give me the grace to be stripped of any pretense or mentality that would hide certain areas of my life from you. May your grace flood every aspect of my life to make each day an encounter with you. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always and then do with me what you will. Make me feel as thou hast felt. Make my soul to glow and melt with the love of Christ my Lord. The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. In this image, Jesus is sapped of energy, emaciated and exhausted. He knew that the nails going into his hands ensured that this cross would be his place of death and allowed the soldiers to continue. Death was coming, and he embraces it both now and with every decision he has made up to now. What emotions rise up in me when I acknowledge that my own death is coming on a day I don't know? Am I afraid of leaving this world and my attachments? Am I perhaps unaffected, a reality I don't need to think about? Am I calm, aware that I am going before my Father who has been with me every step of the way? As Christians, we must have a deep hope about Jesus' promise of new life, and the decisions I make today must be made in the light of heaven. What would I have decided to do if I were looking back at this decision? But we are so grateful as we gaze at Jesus in this image. We can only be so hopeful about the life of heaven to come because of Jesus' love for us on that cross. He has opened the door to new life and asks me simply to follow him by my way of life here on earth. Jesus, my Lord, you went to the cross to take on the punishment of death, which was rightfully mine by my sins and my unfaithfulness. You offer me hope that my own death is no longer a road into darkness, but simply the door into eternal life with you, with the Father and with the Holy Spirit. Give me courage when I see my own death approaching, and may my final moments be spent knowing that you are at my side. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. Holy Mother, pierce me through. In my heart each wound renew. Of my Saviour crucified. The twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. You, Christ, are the King of glory, Son of the Eternal Father. We pause in silence before this image. Truly Jesus has died. 
truly he has put my sins to death. In the words of Pope Francis, Christ's death discloses the utter reliability of God's love, above all in the light of his resurrection. We stand with Mary and John, and we promise the Lord we will never flee from him again. Jesus, my Lord, I adore you here on the cross. I adore the body you gave for me and the blood you poured out for me. I desire to receive you now in spirit, body, blood, soul and divinity. Live in me, Lord. Live in me the mystery of the cross and resurrection. Give me the grace never again to abandon you or to fear your cross in my life. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. Let me share with thee his pain, who for all my sins was slain who for me in torments died. The thirteenth station, Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Did you not know I must be about my father's business? These words of Jesus he spoke to his mother around twenty years ago when she found him in the temple. Mary is keenly aware of Jesus' mission, wanting to spare him the agony, yet not wanting to stand in the way. Mothers and fathers must feel the same when they discover their children have a mission from God which is not theirs, when they somehow lose their child to a particular work, in a marriage, in the vocation to priesthood or religious life. And yet, in being able to lose them into God's hands, they receive them back even more. How truly joyful, maybe in a hidden way, are those parents whose love for each other gives life to children who themselves are able to follow God's calling and further the work of his kingdom on earth. How truly joyful, also now in a hidden way, is Mary, whose openness to God's will has enabled you and I to be saved by the death of Jesus Christ. She holds him tenderly, desiring him to be back with her, yet relieved his mission is now consummated. Do I need to become more open to doing God's will in my life, perhaps unaware right now of the wonderful domino effect my own yes to God might be for the life and joy of others? Mary, our mother, is the perfect model for us in this. Jesus, my Lord, you lie lifeless in the arms of your mother, yet we know that having accepted the punishment of death on behalf of us all, you were now defeating death itself by opening the gates of heaven to those who had already died. Give me the confidence to believe that when you seem not to be alive in my life, it is simply that you are carrying out a more hidden work in me, the fruits of which I must wait to discover. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. Let me mingle tears with thee, Mourning him who mourned for me all the days that I may live. The fourteenth station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. Jesus is prepared for burial and laid in a new tomb belonging to Joseph of Arimathea. 
in the words of a worship song by Sarah Kroger, Oh, we laid you in a grave meant for us, but no stone could keep you from the ones you love. In belonging to Joseph, this true tomb truly was meant for us. Death was where we belonged. But the love of God is so strong as to pre prevent the stone of our sins being an obstacle for his mercy. So much did he desire to be in union with us once more that he endured the shame, the pain and the death of the cross, desiring that we profess our faith in his love and in his mercy. He is laid in silence, and yet we are only able to walk this way of the cross with him because of the great joy of the resurrection three days later and the millions of disciples who came to faith in Jesus Christ in his church, fed and nourished on his word and on the sacraments. You and I now walk those same steps of discipleship, taking our cross and following him and offering to the world the life-giving message of Jesus Christ. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Jesus, my Lord, I long to treat you as tenderly as the two characters in the image treated you. May I love the sacraments in which you are made present to me. May I love your word which feeds me. And may I see in those around me your own face waiting to be treated with that same tenderness. Give me the faithfulness to follow you to death, knowing this to be the path to true life. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. By the cross with thee to stay, there with thee to weep and pray, is all I ask of thee to give. At the end of the Stations of the Cross, it is traditional to pray for the intentions of the Pope, and so with Pope Francis in mind we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you and your families, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.